Hello everyone. Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. So I am here to do a special reading for us right now. This is for the full moon in Taurus, which is happening on Wednesday, October 24th. Um, so if you've been following me, you know that I recently started a new series called Morning Coffee, in which, you know, I get up I'm up pretty early every morning anyway, but I get up and I decided to use that time to do a daily reading for everyone while we all enjoy our morning cup of coffee, yeah? And so in that series, uh, over this past week, the moon kept coming out consecutively, like day after day, I think. I know it came out twice in a row, two days, um, but um, that was a major recurring theme. If you haven't checked that out, I highly encourage you to do so. I do have a playlist um, called Morning Coffee on my channel, so you can go right up in there and get caught up. Yeah, I highly recommend you do that. It's a really great series. I really love it. I really love doing it. I'm definitely going to do my best to continue to continue it. Um, but the moon kept coming out, the card, the moon card, which is in the major arcana. Um, and I've also been following Missy at Saltwater he Heels Tarot. Many of you also follow her too. And in her daily readings for the week, the moon kept coming up as well. And if it wasn't the card, it was just the energies of the moon. And she was talking about this full moon that's coming. And eventually, it clicked in my head that a lot of the energy that was coming through in my readings probably has a lot to do with this full moon that's coming, okay? This is, Missy has been saying that this is probably going to be a really big thing, um, and I, I believe that, I resonate with that, because it kept coming up in my own readings. So this is influencing me to do a special reading for us. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm doing a mirror reading here. Um, if you're familiar with my channel, you know what these mirror readings are. Normally I do them for the weekly Twin Flame readings every Sunday, and we do, the, we do those live at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're interested, please check it out. It's not just for Twin Flames, okay? Anybody can relate to it, to be honest. Um, but with these mirror readings, what I do is I take a concept and I split it into two decks or two sides. So for this reading, I'm going to be doing pulling on the energies of um, leading up to this full moon in this time period leading up to the full moon this is going to be represented by the deck on the left the deck on the right is going to be the energies moving post full moon okay so what are we so basically with the the upcoming energies what are we building towards what are we working towards for the post energies what are we now receiving what has this work that we've been doing up until the full moon what is that producing for us? What will we be harvesting? What will we be receiving from this full moon? Okay. Um, yeah. An interesting concept, um, something that Missy did mention in her weekend reading um, that I watched today. I am filming this on Saturday the 20th. Um, and in her week weekend reading, she mentioned that... Um, uh, the sun is going to be going into Scorpio in this coming week, whereas the moon is going to be in Taurus. And Scorpio and Taurus are exact opposites within the zodiac. I thought that was a really cool thing that I definitely wanted to point out to you guys because Missy was saying it's creating like a perfect storm of some sort of manifestation to come in through. And it's funny because I totally resonated with that because I can already really feel it. Um, there's a lot, especially with Venus being in retrograde. Now, Venus is the ruling planet of Taurus. So um, with Taurus, with the moon being in Taurus, the sun going to be in Scorpio at this time, and then Venus being in retrograde and also being the ruling planet of Taurus, there is a lot. I mean, this is like... This is like, this is a really intense energy. And I know for me personally, this path, this recent re uh, uh, Venus in retrograde has really been putting me through the ringer personally, but I've come to understand that it's actually a really, really good thing. And I've just, I've noticed so much progress within myself and I've, I've been really working on aligning with what it is I truly want and desire in life. And for, for me, that focuses on love, especially with, um, Venus being my ruling planet in the Western chart, because I am, my sun sign is in Taurus. In, my, in the Eastern chart, my sun sign is um, Aries, and so my ruling planet there would be Mars. But, um, you know, and it really de depends, doesn't matter which chart you resonate with the most, it's just what energies resonate with you at that moment, depending on what it is you're looking for or looking at, okay? Um, but, so for me, there's been a lot of focus on love, and 
instead of chasing after the love that I want or the, 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 the situation that I want romantically, it's about aligning with it. Again, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote Missy again. Missy, if you end up watching this video, love you, boo. Can't wait till you get here to New York in, in uh, December. But anyway, um, Missy says, she preaches, we do not chase, we align. And that is actually something that I've really been aligning with in this Venus in retrograde. This Venus in retrograde has really helped me understand that situation, especially as, you know, an Aries sun in, a, in the Eastern chart. And then also in the Western chart, Aries, um, my, my Venus is in Aries and Venus is the planet of love. I can be very type A, very action oriented, especially when it comes to love. I see something and I go after it. Okay. Sometimes that doesn't work out. Well, a lot of the time that doesn't work out so well because you know, it's pretty intimidating, but the Venus retrograde here has really helped me see or understand and actually appreciate this whole situation of we do not chase, we align. So we're going to get into this mirror reading here, and I'm really excited to see what comes out for us. All right, guys? And then, of course, I'm going to finish off the reading with some um, oracle guidance. I believe I'm going to go... Uh, there could be a lot of oracle guidance because I already feel... Uh, the Whispers of Love is calling out to me. I want to pull some from the uh, Crystal Mandala and the Lightworker, but I also want to pull from the Unicorns. So this is probably going to be a bit of an extended reading. Um, you know, I'm not really one. I know a lot of people like to do short readings. That's not me, okay? This <laughs> this channel is called Divine Conversations. We're going to have a conversation about this. So sometimes, sometimes it can get kind of lengthy. So watch it all at once. Grab yourself a coffee, a cocktail, uh, smoke them if you got them, you know, kick back, get comfortable. Let's chat. You know, you don't have to watch it all at once. You can watch it in, in sections, whatever works for you. But I really encourage everyone to try at least to go through this whole reading because it's not just the tarot that's going to give us a lot of good messages. It's also the oracle guidance at the end. It's going to most likely help pull everything together. Okay, guys? Alrighty, so this is just a general message for the human collective. This is not um, soul worker, I'm sorry, soul worker, light worker, soulmate, twin flame, star, star seed, star child, whatever. This is not, has nothing to do with any of those different uh, dissections. This is all just for the human collective as a whole. This is a general reading, so it's not necessarily going to resonate with everybody, okay? So take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. Um, if it doesn't really resonate with you, you're more than welcome to continue to watch. But if it if it's not resonating with you and you don't want to continue, that is perfectly okay. It was great to see you. Hopefully, I'll see you again soon. Yeah? All right, guys. Let's get into it. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the human collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved surrounding this full moon in Taurus. Please help us gain a clear and accurate understanding of the energies surrounding us moving or leading up to this full moon, represented by the deck on the left, and the energies surrounding us post full moon represented by the deck on the right and please show us how these energies are interacting with each other and also mirroring each other thank you so much spirit all right guys so already i'm seeing green uh, as soon as i finished asking that question i started seeing green and the divine and the universe the divine was saying to me this is all about love and it's all about healing what makes you happy? What makes you feel secure? Now, I am shuffling the energies pre-full moon, okay? Pre-full moon. Here we go. So, also what I saw, not just green, but then I saw white. White is, to me, is divinity, um, but more so purity. True divine energy uh, I see as gold, but um, the white here that I see is definitely divinity, but it's also purity, and it's also divine protection that they're saying they're saying to me. A lot of us are going through a period where we are really, really healing, really purging, purging out our heart centers, purging out all of the shit that we've had just accumulating and building up all the dust and muck and grime that we've built up surrounding love, um, surrounding just life in general, surrounding our heart centers, okay? So this is really 
helping us heal and purify ourselves when it comes to love, when it comes to the heart, okay? Green is also an earth, an, a color of earthliness, all right? And so that definitely speaks to the Taurus energy. Okay, so we've got our pre-full moon energy set. Boop. All right, next I'm going to shuffle post-full moon. Now I'm seeing pink here. To Pink to me is divine, unconditional love. Um... Oh, oh, goodness. Okay, we, we've got a flyer here. Woo! All right. This is very interesting. So we're looking at post-full. This, this is the deck for the post-full moon. Um, we have the world in reverse here. And we have the emperor. We also have the queen of swords. Okay? So, um... Give me just a second here. Let me just uh, channel this really quick. Yes, I am drinking coffee. Y'all know I love my coffee. <laughs> um, so what's going on here? Interesting. I'm trying to decipher whether this, this is post full moon. Okay, these are some messages post full moon. And this is energies that we're building up towards. Okay, so this is kind of like a combined message. Um, post, pre and post full moon. This is what we're building up towards. The Queen of Swords energy here is very much about cutting something out. Okay, this is authenticity. This is integrity. All right, this is cutting out the drama. And what's happening is an, a cycle is ending. Uh, ooh, a cycle is coming to an end. It's not fully there yet. So this is why this is something we're building up towards. But a cycle is coming to an end. And um, it's... A patriarchal cycle with the emperor in reverse. We are in the process of um, releasing the hold that patriarchal energy has on society. And that is absolutely happening. It's being facilitated by the rise of the divine feminine, which is represented here by the queen of swords. This is, this is an energy of no bullshit, no drama, not even trying to like fight or argue about it. It's really decisive, very secure, very honest and straightforward. If it doesn't resonate, if it doesn't serve your highest good, if it doesn't nurture you, it's gone. You're just cutting it out. And it's not even about arguing about it. It's not even about fighting, being malicious, one-upmanship. It has nothing to do with ego. It's purely what serves you and what doesn't. And if it doesn't serve you, it's gone, okay? And so this is a cycle that's coming to an end. So the world in reverse here, to me, reversals can either be blockage or something that is in the process of happening um, or something is happening underneath the surface and you're not really aware of it. So we could be not really all that consciously aware of it with the world in reverse here, but this is more so a cycle is in the process of coming to an end, okay? Which is very, which makes a whole lot of sense because Aluna Ash posted yesterday, um, October 20, uh, excuse me, October 19th, she posted a video or a post, uh, a text post saying that, you know, the veil is gone. Um, and that absolutely resonates. This, what just came through right here resonates with the fact that the veil is gone. And so now we can see things much clearer than we thought. And so now we're really at an advantage when it comes to cutting out the fluff, cutting out the bullshit. Okay. All right. Post full moon energies here. Post full moon energies. Oh, so I was seeing pink. Pink, which is an, a color of unconditional love, a color of divine love. So I really feel like all of this purging, all this clearing that we've been doing pre full moon is really okay. Post full moon energies are set. Um, all the clearing and purging that we've been doing pre full moon is setting the stage for um, a clear and open channel for divine, unconditional love to really come through, okay? That's excellent. It really is, guys. All right, so we're going to start with the pre-full moon energies here. Overall, we've got, we've got the page. I'm sorry, not the page. The Knight of Pentacles. So this makes sense. The Knight of Pentacles is the slowest moving knight in the deck, but he's very methodical, very strategic. If you want an energy to help you build a blueprint, um, to help you build a foundation, 
then this is this is your guy, okay? So this really makes sense. This is taking everything step by step, piece by piece. In no way are we rush, rushing towards anything. We are literally, this is very much an energy of divine timing, but also working with the divine to really make sure that your foundation that you're building for yourself for this upcoming situation, whatever you're manifesting in your life, to really be solid so that it can last. This is not about wishy-washiness anymore. This is not about jumping into things willy-nilly thinking, oh, well, maybe it'll work out, maybe it won't. No, we don't, no, we're too grown for that. We ain't, ain't, ain't nobody got time for that shit anymore, okay? We want the real deal. We want the truth. We want honesty. We want integrity. We want stability. And this is what we're building here with the Knight of Pentacles, all right? This is excellent. Um, also, full moons are about releasing, okay? So uh, I really feel, especially with all the purging that's been happening in this past week, again, if you haven't been watching my morning coffee series, I highly recommend you do so just because it's the, 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 the narrative that's been going through this past week um, is really falling very much in alignment with this full moon and with the Venus in retrograde. We are purging. We are clearing out all of the things that no longer serve us when it comes to relationships, when it comes to our material lives, when it comes to pleasure and happiness, okay? And so with the Knight of Pentacles being the first card of the overall energy in the pre-full moon situation, I mean, this really is a, a beautiful card to have because it means we're taking things step by step, okay? Oh, hell yeah. Here we go. Here is Venus herself, the Empress, all right? And this is also a Taurus energy, okay? This is... Unconditional love, this is um, fertility, this is abundance, this is beauty, this is passion, it's sensuality. Um, it's everything that you want and desire being handed to you on a silver platter. No questions asked. Why? Because the Empress is love. The Empress is unconditional love. The Empress wants to provide you with everything your heart could ever desire, no matter what. This is an energy that the universe also puts out because the universe is never it will never say no to you. The universe will never say no to you, even though you feel you're in a position where it's like, well, well, my manifestations aren't coming or they didn't come in the way I wanted them to. Well, OK, first of all, your manifestations are coming. They're just not happening when you want them to. OK, second of all, the manifestation isn't necessarily going to come the way you think it should, the way you want it to. It's going to come to you in the best possible way to serve your highest good. So in no way is the universe telling you no. It's just giving you what you want, just how you didn't really expect it. OK, and that's actually that's a very this it, it's a very interesting energy when it comes to the Empress here, because it can be somewhat detrimental sometimes. Sometimes the Empress is so loving, so smothering that it's just it's enabling. But I just wanted to point that out there for contrast. That's not what's going on here, okay? What's happening here is you have a very, very fertile, energetic environment to build the foundation for what it is you truly desire, okay? With the Knight of Pentacles and the Empress. And then the next card, I mean, the next card that's right underneath that couldn't be any more perfect. The Eight of Wands. Clear movement. Clear, concise, direct movement, okay? Knowing exactly what it is you want and going for it. If you don't know what you want quite clearly just yet, this is a moment for you to identify that, to clear away the cobwebs, to clear away the shit, to clear away all the things that have been blocking you. And if you're not, if you are not in the process of clearing those things away, you're in the process of identifying those things so that you can clear them away. And that's absolutely what Venus in retrograde is doing for us right now. And once we get into that full moon, then you'll be perfectly set to really officially clear that stuff away. Underneath everything like that, hallelujah, can I get an amen, the magician. Guys, this is energy's upcoming. Okay, this this is the, not upcoming, this is um energy's uh, pre-full moon, okay? So we're literally, literally setting the stage right now, okay, for our manifestations, for our desires to come in. You guys, this is gorgeous. This is beautiful energy already, okay? So well, let's get into the uh, current surrounding energies when it comes to pre-full moon in Taurus, okay? First set of current surrounding energies we've got. <laughs> the Ace of Cups. So... Um, we're definitely in a process of manifesting love, okay? Now, external love is secondary here. Primarily, we are in the process of cultivating self-love, unconditional love for the self. We are in the process of filling our own cups here. Once we fill our cup and it overfloweth, 
are, 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 are <laughs> I've been listening to Missy so much lately. <laughs> But anyway, um, she's if you're not familiar with Missy, Saltwater Heels Tarot, pick, uh, check her out. She's great. Um, anyway, um, but she says my cup overfloweth when it comes to talking about this type of situation. But we are in the process of filling our own cups, of cultivating self-love in order to find that partnership, that love externally. Because of, uh, number one, number one, 100 percent, first rule of love, of a beneficial loving relationship at least in my book, you cannot have love, a, a true love, a true beneficial partner or love externally until you have that love within, all right? So this is what we're cultivating. These are the foundation. This is the foundation we're building with the Knight of Pentacles. This is the foundation, the foundation that we are building right here, right now, pre-full moon in Taurus, Ace of Cups. Ace of Cups is coupled with, look at that. The Ace of Swords. Woo! This is the clarity. Okay. Well, that just flew out of my hand and it landed reversed, but I think I just got overexcited. But this is the clarity. This is the aha moment. This is seeing things clearly enough to know that you deserve love. You deserve to be loved and you deserve to love yourself. This is clear. This is the understanding of what it is that has been blocking you from this love and cutting it away with the Ace of Swords. I mean, damn, guys, we are not, we're, this is so beautiful already, man. I'm loving this. Okay. Second set of current energies, pre-full moon. We've got the Five of Wands. This is the conflict. This is the differing opinions. This is These are all the people that oppose you, that say that you can't have what you truly desire. It's not possible. It's, the, it's that, oh, you're crazy. You're foolish. Oh, it doesn't really exist. Bullshit. Bullshit. If you want it, if you desire it, it's in, it, that desire is there for a reason. So that means it does exist and you can pull it in, okay? Five of Wands is coupled with the Two of Pentacles. Yeah, yeah. This is an energy of trying to keep a balance and trying to please others, trying to appease the opinions of others. This is that juggling act. This is juggling back and forth the expectations of others versus your own expectations of the situation, okay? Um, this also could be internal. It doesn't have to be external. This could be internal. This could be you juggling. Balancing, trying to balance all of the differing opinions that you have, that you have, and these are things that have accumulated over your lifetime. This is that push and pull between the heart saying "I want true unconditional love" and the mind in its conditioning saying "Oh, I'm not convinced that that exists anymore." We're clearing that away, guys. We are clearing that up. It is time for you to focus on you. Choose for yourself. Choose what it is you want for yourself, and. Focusing on that and aligning with it and not allowing fear or doubt or the conditioning of the past to get in your way, okay? Your current challenge, pre-full moon, we've got the Knight of Wands. Now, this makes a whole lot of sense. Why? Because a lot of us just want to move forward, okay? This is in your challenge because we are very passionate and we want to just rush in. But you see... We have the Knight of Pentacles as the crowning energy, the very first card, the overall and the very first card of the overall energies, which is saying to us, we need to take this step by step, move slowly, use as much of this time as possible. Even though you've got this burning fire within and wanting to just rush forward and get to your end goal, it's not about the end goal. It's more about the journey. Okay. The Knight of Wands is coupled with, ah the world. Wow. So we've got mirroring already, guys. And the world, because the world came out in the other deck as a flyer, okay? And that was, in the reverse, talks talking about how this, all of this stuff is in the process of coming to an end. So your challenge is to not rush forward and to let this cycle come to an end naturally in its own time, okay? There's definitely an energy of needing to work with in divine timing, Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So the potential outcome here, potential outcome, yes, but actually I feel more guided to word this or to label this as um, the closing message when it comes to pre-full moon energies. Okay. Closing message. You have well, 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 the Queen of Wands. And this is another energy of being receptive, letting something come to you, being patient and allowing the manifestation to happen. 
The Queen of Wands is very, very magical, okay? She can be seen as like a witch or a sorceress, um, someone that works with um, the, basically that works with the law of attraction to bring to her what it is she truly desires, okay? Um, she's very attractive, very social, uh, very charismatic, and is definitely knows exactly what she wants and is not afraid to go after it, but she goes after it in a different way. She manifests it in bringing it towards her, whereas the King of Wands goes, literally goes for it himself, okay? Um, excuse me, guys. When I, when I do all this talking, I tend to get a little, uh, clogged up, <laughs> a little, a little, uh, snotty. So please excuse the sniffling. Um, but also, also for me personally, um, being, you know, being a twin flame myself, being on this twin flame journey and as a twin flame guide, I see the Empress and the Queen of Wands as the divine feminine. Okay. And like I said, in the flyers with the Queen of Swords, which was upright, the uh, world in reverse, and, oh shoot, what was the last one? Oh, the Emperor in reverse. Okay, so look, we've got the counterparts there too, because in the flyers, the Emperor came out. The Emperor was in reverse, and I was talking about how we were releasing the energies or the, the, the stronghold that the patriarchy has on society, and that's being facilitated by the rise of the Divine Feminine. Well, here we go. We've got more depictions of the Divine Feminine. We've got the Empress, and we've got the Queen of Wands, okay? That's really excellent. Okay. The Queen of Wands is coupled with the Eight of Pentacles. Oh my God, you guys. Closing message is, number one, either you're doing the work to bring this, to bring this towards you, you are most likely really using this Venus in retrograde situation to really clear, to purge, to understand love from a different way, to understand what it is you truly want from love and to doing the work to clear all of this stuff out that is blocking you from it. Or the closing message is use this time wisely. Use this time to do the work within in order to attract what it is you truly want truly desire. And at this moment in time, the best thing to do, the best inner work to do is the clearing. Okay? The cleansing, the purging. Wow, guys. Wow, wow, wow. This is excellent. This is so amazing so far. All right. So for the post full moon energies, we're starting off. Okay. We've got some mirroring here. The Five of Wands. Now, this is conflict. Um, post full moon, it, things might get... I'm not even going to lie. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Things might be a little bit rocky. Um, there might be... you. There are a lot of us that may come to this point in our lives, to the, into this position where it's like we are fully 100% autonomous. We are the masters of our domain. We have really cleared things out. And what I'm seeing with the Five of Wands is a lot of people externally, this is external energy now, a lot of individuals within your external reality are not necessarily vibing with that and are kind of in conflict and kind of feel threatened by, by you, by your the energetic work that you've done to better yourself. Um, and this is a lot, these are a lot of people that may have been what you could consider to be handlers, um, stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, these are people that have not been doing their own inner work. And now that you've kind of risen above that, now you're being, tr now you're triggering them. Okay. So that's not, that's not so bad to be quite honest what the divine is saying. It just means you did your work. <laughs> Not even gonna lie, it literally just means you just did your work, boo. Good on you. Let them flounder. Let them flounder about and be like, oh my god, who does he or she think they are? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> That's your problem, not mine. We've got strength. Hello, strength. Post full moon. Yes, you're gonna need. You're gonna need some strength to deal with this five of wands energy, and that strength comes in not being reactionary. That strength comes in understanding that they just didn't. They're just not doing what it is that would serve them, that would make them truly happy. And so you just got to move forward and keep on trucking. But strength is also saying throughout this conflict of the Five of Wands, because as you can see here, the Five of Wands is in your current energy, one of the part of the, some of the current surrounding energies for your post, your, I'm sorry, your pre full moon. Okay. So post full moon, now you've done your work and you've cultivated the strength here. And as a result, good Lord, as a result, you've got your wish fulfillment with the Nine of Cups and also 
you've got the Queen of Cups here. The Queen of Cups is, again, another depiction of the Divine Feminine, or at least just the Feminine Energies. The Queen of Cups is someone that is very aware, very sure of their emotions, knows the value of their emotions. So is the King, okay? But with the Queen, to me, a lot of people say that the Queen of Cups um, is someone that's just overflowing with emotions. Her emotions are flowing out freely. And that be that could very well be the case. Me, personally, when that's happening, I see that as the Queen of Cups in reverse. But because because I see the Queen of Cups when she's upright, and again, everything is upright here. I'm not working with reversals. But um, in this situation, in reading the energy, well, anyway, the, the Queen of Cups to me, upright, is someone that is very aware of their emotions but does not share them. She kind of keeps them close to herself. You know what I mean? Just, um, and uses the, and is very perceptive through them, uses them to understand what's going on around her, to read the energy around her, because the Queen of Cups is very intuitive and very psychic. The King of Cups is the individual that expresses the emotion, okay? That's in my personal opinion. So what I'm getting here for this post-full moon energy, this is someone, now you could have gone through some pretty some pretty strong psychic attunements. You might feel way more connected intuitively, energetically, empathically than you have in the past. But this is someone that has become, I, I'm just seeing, in the Queen of Cups, I'm seeing someone that is very clear, cleansed of their emotions, very pure in their emotional state, or at least in a much purer form than they were in the past. Very much aware of what it is that they have, that they, that they, um, their emotional value, very much aware of what their emotions mean to them, what they are feeling emotionally, what they want in an emotional fulfillment. Um, and this is also someone that's very much ready for love, okay? Someone that has come to a queen status here, has a big old ornate and very, very full cup, and is waiting for that counterpart to come in and, and, and um, you know, balance the scales in that way, okay? Okay, so the first set of current energies are surrounding, excuse me, the first set of surrounding energies, post full moon, we've got the hermit. So this is an, uh, this is an energy of knowing, knowing your inner light. Okay. Post full moon. Some of you might go into a little bit of a hermit mode after this full moon, because once the full moon hits, it's probably going to be pretty intense. Well, it is, this full moon is going to be pretty intense anyway. Um, it's some of you, it might hit you pretty hard and you might want to just go within. Um, there's definitely going to be an energy of going deeper within to find or to find deeper meaning because you've been doing a lot of work to clear, uh, a lot of preparation to clear. And once the full moon hits, then you could be going within to do the actual, do more purging. So it could be a little bit of a purgy cycle coming out. But the most part that I'm getting here is once we move post full moon, you're going to be much clearer than you were before and more of your inner light is going to be able to be seen. Okay. And that was what I was also picking up with the queen of cups here. Someone who is very just emotionally cleansed in a, in a, in a, in a way. The hermit is coupled with Ha ha! The King of Pentacles. So, um, this is um, uh, this is an energy. Now, some of you may be in, um, in the process or in the position to now offer to someone. Some of you may have come to a deep or a strong enlightenment within that has helped you get to this point where now you can show up as a King of Pentacles to somebody. Okay, uh, you could, we, I, I mean, I'm not, I don't really want to point out signs, um, but this one is a bit unique because the hermit can either, can, can symbolize Virgo, um, and then that's coupled with the king of pentacles, which is another earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. I just wanted to point that out there, but this is a general reading, so I'm really not going to get into signs. I just, that was a cool little coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences. <laughs> I don't believe in coincidences. So that's why I felt really strongly to point that out. Some of you might be dealing with a Virgo or another Earth sign. Um, but this this full moon really is going to be very auspicious when it comes to clearing away the blockages that keeps certain individuals from either expressing themselves as a king of pentacles who is someone who's very grounded and stable and is ready for commitment wants a commitment and also blocking you from bringing this sort of person in so either your light is going to be shining and you can now show up for someone as a king of pentacles or your light is going to be shining and you can attract someone that will show up for you as a king of pentacles okay
Wow. Oh, and then look at that. Look at that. I just want to point that out. You see on the Hermit card, there's that moon. Boop. Full moon right there. Isn't that so cool? Okay. Second set of surrounding energies post full moon, you have... Ooh, the Seven of Swords. Deception, lies. And if it's not that, it's something that's happening underneath the surface. Just because it's the Seven of Swords, guys, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's all that bad. And that's something, that is a depiction of the Seven of Swords that I've been wrapping my head around lately. Um, because I do like to see the cards in as many different ways as possible kind of like expand my vocabulary when it comes to the cards. And the Seven of Swords is one of those cards that has been gaining some sort of redefinition for me. This isn't always someone lying to you, cheating on you, backstabbing you, stealing from you. This also could be just something that's happening underneath the surface that's not really being seen, whether that's intentional or not, okay? Seven of Swords is coupled with Ah, there's the Ace of Cups. So we've got more mirroring, okay? And so what I'm seeing here is post full moon, the Ace of Cups energy is being generated underneath the surface. I'm seeing, I'm seeing energies of some, there could be some situations where there could be some relationships ending and it happening in a very incognito, incognito, I can't believe I just, <laughs> incognito, I'm so sorry if anyone was offended by that, <laughs> but anyway, in incognito fashion, there could be people leaving situations and not really talking so much about it, not making it so, so clear, not, maybe not even really communicating with their partner as to why. And if they're do, and if you're doing that, then that's in service of you. You're not trying to really get into any sort of arguments about the situation because, um, if you look here, some situations that some people might be getting out of, you see this kid is running away with five swords. There could be some very much five of swords energy when it comes to leaving certain situations or leaving certain relationships, okay? And so you may just not even want, you're not about the drama. You don't want that drama. Why? Because you have come into a place of self-love unconditional love for the self. So you're willing to pull yourself out of that situation because you know it doesn't serve you anymore. You know it's not serving your highest good. You know it's not serving your loving vibration that you hold for yourself, okay? So you're getting yourself out in a very incognito fashion. There also could be situations, now this, this definitely could be seen as, Seven of Swords could be seen um, as, you know, lying, cheating, backstabbing, um, And uh, it could be symbolizing Five of Swords energy, which is self-destructive, one-upmanship, that kind of situation, shit starter energy. And you could have been, uh, I'm seeing the Five of Swords with the, what the kid is holding and the Two of Swords energy being indecisive, being like, well, I don't know if I should leave this relationship. Um, I, potentially, maybe you could have been in it for so long that you kind of feel like you just got to stick it out and maybe it'll get better. But with this vibration of the Ace of Cups here, unconditional self-love if it's not serving you honey it's not serving you and you're getting the fuck up out of that shit with the seven of swords you're leaving you're done you're done why because you love yourself enough to know that you do not deserve to be in this self-defeating this deceptive backstabbing energy okay hello and there could be and there's the five of wands energy again that conflict well don't leave me we've been together for so long you can't leave me now bitch yes i can why? Because I love myself and this relationship does not serve me. This relationship is hurting me. This relationship is detrimental to me. This is not the type of situation that I want in my life. Therefore, you've got the strength to walk away. You've got the strength to move forward towards your wish fulfillment, that which you truly desire. You've got the strength and the inner light, the inner knowledge to now be a king of pentacles for someone else in a situation that is really going to benefit not just you, but the other person and everyone else involved, quite frankly, or the inner light to free yourself up to attract that king of pentacles. All right? The challenge when it comes to Post full moon energies, you've got. Wow, guys, holy shit. You can't make this shit up, guys. The challenge is moving away. The Six of Swords. 
honoring yourself, loving yourself enough to know that you do not need to stay, loving yourself enough to know that you do not need to stay in this situation. This doesn't even have to be just a romantic relationship. This could be any sort of relationship with someone else. I'm hearing codependency. There could be some situations that the, situ the relationship is a codependent one. But this could be a work situation. This could be love. This could be family. This could be friends. This could just be associates. I mean, it doesn't even, it doesn't really matter. Whatever doesn't serve you, whatever is keeping you from expressing your own truth and your own inner love, excuse me, your own truth with the Ace of Swords and your own little inner love with the Ace of Cups, that your challenge post full moon is to clear that shit out. Cut it out and move away, okay? Six of Swords is coupled with... I, what did I mean? Damn. The Nine of Pentacles. The Nine of Pentacles is freedom, independence, abundance. The Nine of Pentacles is also the card of the single person, the bachelor, the bachelorette. Six of Swords and the Nine of Pentacles. Moving away... Out of, moving out of the situation in service of your own autonomy, your own independence, your own sovereignty. Good Lord, you guys, this is amazing. I'm loving this reading right now, y'all. Final message, closing message for the post-full moon energies you have. Woo! Good Lord, <laughs> the three of swords. Ooh. <laughs> okay, but before we go any further, let's see what that's coupled with. Ah, ha ha, the final piece of mirroring, the magician. Closing message is, learn from the past. Manifest through the contrast. Uh, wow. Manifest through the contrast. And what is the contrast here? The heartbreak. Experiencing the things that no longer serve you. And honestly, that's the... I hope she's okay. Um, that sword right there in the in the magician. I mean, in this deck, it's called the alchemist, but it's the magician. And here, you see that sword. That sword is really standing out to me. And of course, then there's the cup that's standing out. Okay, but the sword is standing out the most. Why? This is the aha moment. This is the clarity. This is the understanding. Look, you've got the ace of swords here with the ace of cups. This is in the pre full moon energies. All right. Closing message for the full moon post full moon energies. Yeah. Look, even pre-full moon, do the work to manifest, to manifest, to attract what it is you truly desire with the Queen of Wands and the Eight of Pentacles. Post-full moon, manifest through the contrast. Learn from the past. Learn from the heartbreak and manifest from there. And when I say that, I mean manifest what it is you truly desire by understanding what you don't desire by what you have dealt with in the past. Whoa. G guys, this is such this is such a beautiful reading. This is such a beautiful reading. I am so happy that I listened to Spirit and I did this. Okay. Um I'm going to go with the unicorns first for our oracle messages here. And unicorns for me are the messages from the unicorns are often um Action oriented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So, from the unicorn spirit, please, best messages in relation or uh, in a, uh, yeah, in relation to this full moon in Taurus, both pre and post energies. Well, okay, let's do it this way. Best message, uh, for pre-full moon, pre-full moon energy, please, spirit, best, woo, take all of them. Okay, this is pre- and post-full moon. Underneath the deck is beloved. Wow. Wow, guys. Beloved, prepare for your life partner. Romance is returning to your relationship. Believe that you are lovable. Oh, man. You can't make this stuff up, you guys. You really just can't make it up. I'm going to leave this here. Can you see it? Kind of. Okay. Now, the cards that came out, we got, jeez, we got, good Lord, we got a lot of them. Yes, they're saying, yes, you did, but you need them all. These are all messages. So, 
The divine is really blessing us with some serious messages here, guys. We've got abundance. Enjoy the bounty of life. Your supply is unlimited. Blessings are coming to you, okay? Abundance. So don't worry. If you're having to leave a situation or you're feeling left out, don't worry because you're not. You're not left out. Everything is working just fine. Gentleness. Be kind to yourself and others. Honor your gentleness. Speak words of love. We've got miracles. Have faith that your miracle is on its way. Your prayers have been answered. Surrender the how. Surrender, guys. Just, just surrender to the universe. Allow the universe to be... To work to be your best advocate. Put yourself in the Queen of Wands energy. Know it what it is that you know exactly what it is that you want. Align with that vibration and let the universe bring it to you. Okay. Nate, nature. Ground yourself. Find a sanctuary in nature. Connect with the elementals. So you really might want to um, work on grounding yourself, keeping yourself grounded, especially since we're doing a lot of purging. Oh my goodness, there are so many messages here. <laughs> especially since we're doing a lot of purging right now, um, a lot of clearing, a lot of healing. It is really essential to ground yourself. Get out in nature. If it's still, if it's a bit too cold, just to like go out to the park or like the, gra the grass and like stick your, put your bare feet in the grass, just spend some time outside for a little bit and just connect with the energies, yeah? You have innocence. Take time to play. Nurture your inner child. Live with a childlike sense of humor. Have fun. Don't be so hard on yourself. You know, let it just let it go. Have a good time with it. And finally, you've got expansion. Spread your wings and soar. Share your message and shine your light. Show the world what you're made of. And the very beginning of the post full moon energies, you've got the hermit which is and the king of pentacles. This is shining your light. This is standing true in your authenticity, okay? Um, the King of Pentacles is also a, a, an Earth energy, like I said before. So even though you know I mentioned it because of to, because of Hermit, um, because of the Hermit representing Virgo, the King of Pentacles can also represent Taurus, and Taurus, the full moon is in Taurus. Okay, but yeah, shine your light, show the world what you're made of, be authentic to you. Yes. Okay, now let's go to the Crystal Mandala. Crystal Mandala. This is beautiful, guys. So beautiful. Okay. Best message, please, from the Crystal Mandala deck. There it is. And another one. We've got two. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so underneath the deck you have already there is value. So we can read that one. Let's see. I just want to make sure I can see everything. Yeah. All right, cool. I'm going to move these over temporarily because I'm going to line the top of our reading here with our decks so that we can see what's underneath. Okay. Underneath the deck you have already there is value. Okay, the cards that came out, we have goddess number, oh, I'm sorry, card number 46, goddess Kali and black obsidian, sacred revolution. And we also have card number 36, ascended Ma master Mataji and crimson cuprite, relief and repair. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. So let's get to the card that's underneath the deck, 43. All right. Card number 43, already there, is value. I'm going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it there and read, the, read it. We bring you the empowerment to see that already there is value. It is natural for creative energy to become excited by new possibilities, new ideas, and new forms. It is also possible, however, for creative energy to become engaged in liberating the undiscovered value within that which already exists, polishing it until it shines with divine light. I want to read that again. It is also possible, however, for creative energy to become engaged in liberating the undiscovered value within that which already exists, polishing it until it shines with divine light. 
Sometimes there is a need to shed the past and all associated with it completely, starting afresh. However, at other times, there is something of value from the current, from the past that can, if allowed to bask in the light of your creativity, become very valuable for your future. In your enthusiasm to move forward in life, don't forget to take the value that already exists in your world along with you. Okay, yeah. Okay, I was trying to see if there were anything else that stands out, but nope, that was pretty much it. So next we're going to go to card number 36, Relief and Repair. Here we go. Relief and Repair. We bring you the blessing of relief and repair. Our warmth and nurturing will restore and rebalance your body, mind, and soul when the light of spirit burns too brightly. Spiritual light is like the light of the sun. It brings life and joy, but too much can burn. If that happens to you, you will feel overwhelmed, overheated, overexcited, or overstretched mentally, physically, or emotionally. We will help you recover and increase your ability to be exposed to spiritual light again in future without becoming overloaded or burnt out. We ask you to soften and relax into our rich red energy now, which nurtures you with the cooling, restorative life force of the Earth Mother. We shall help you naturally discharge excess energy whilst we receive, strengthen, and fortify you. I'm sorry, whilst we revive, strengthen, and fortify you with our nourishing grace. So this is definitely an energy of needing to take a break. So what I was saying with the Hermit card, post full moon energy, some of you might need to go into a little bit of a Hermit mode just to rest and recharge after. Because this is a really intense period, guys. It's a very, very intense time, okay? Excellent. So finally, we have card number 46, Sacred Revolution. Here we, oops, here we go. We bring you the empowerment of Sacred Revolution. Revolution comes when a cycle of authority or power is ending. It has become inadequate for the task of leadership now required, and a new order must be established in its place. It is not simply a chapter within a book drawing to a close, but an entirely new book, perhaps an entirely new genre, opening up according to divine will unfolding. In such cases, subtle change is not going to cut it. You need radical action to bring about the new order. That new order may be in your world or maybe or in your own being. When revolution is sacred, the new order will be that which allows you to become more of yourself to successfully attain your spiritual goals. I mean, that is such a perfect message here. Such a perfect message. Okay, next we're going to go to the uh, Lightworker Oracle. <laughs> Sorry, guys. The Lightworker Oracle here. All right. Best messages, please, Spirit, from the Lightworker Oracle in relation to this full moon in Taurus. Best messages, please, for million Taurus. There we go. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Lots of messages, guys. Lots of messages. Okay. Card number 44 is underneath the deck. Seventh ray of ritual, order, and ceremony. All right. For what came out of the deck, we've got card number 33, Master Healing. We've got card number 29, Pink Rose of Lady Nada. That is very, very poignant. And then card number two, Second Ray of Wisdom. All right. I, like I said, guys, this is going to be a little bit of an extended reading here, so enjoy. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start with card number 44. <laughs> Seventh Ray of Ritual Order and Ceremony. When the gift of the seventh ray enters your life, something new is being formed, something that will benefit your world. There may be an increased interest in magic, ceremony, and ritual for healing purposes. Resonating with high-frequency violet light and the Archangel Zodkiel, 
The seventh ray also helps transmute energy from lower to higher frequency. It is a spiritual cleansing agent that allows the truth of spiritual freedom, empowerment, and choice to be seen and felt, restoring hope and joy to the heart. Yep. <laughs> The seventh ray is very active upon the earth at this time. All of humanity is being affected by it. The seventh ray is the push-pull between the old and the new, the life that has been and can no longer continue in that form, and the new life that wants to evolve from the old. It honors traditions and ancestral wisdom that, ser that serve new life. new life. When the seventh ray enters your life, you are asked to balance your attachment to what has been with an openness to the new. It is a time to fearlessly question what has been, Honor what continues to hold value for you and dismiss what no longer serves you. That is a perfect message, guys. Perfect message. Okay, next we have card number 33. Master Healing. Excuse me. As you meditate... Remain true to what inspires your heart and commit to your spiritual path. You become, oh, I'm sorry. As you meditate, remain true to what inspires your heart and commit to your spiritual path. You become an increasingly powerful healer. You are here to live your own life, to be true to what genuinely moves you. The unconditionally loving guide and ascended master Serapis Bay comes to you now with a blessing of master healing to further your success on your path. That's gorgeous. The Master Serapis Bay is a beloved guide for those who feel a strong soul connection to ancient Egypt, for healers who are developing their own modalities, and those who love to work with high frequency concepts. He also assists with the translation of spiritual inspiration into practical worldly plans. Taurus, hello! He comes to confirm that the Ascended Masters are aware of you. You are an integral part of a powerful spiritual team that has taken physical incarnation to help awaken consciousness into love. You are asked to tune into your heart. What do you love enough to overcome any obstacle to attain it? What motivates and inspires you? No, no I'm sorry, not what seems possible or practical, but what is authentic? Ace of Swords. Ace of Cups, hello. We are most powerful when we serve authenticity from the heart. Ace of Swords, Ace of Cups. <laughs> a bird might learn to dive underwater from time to time, but is never going to be at its most powerful if it has to live underwater. It would struggle to thrive if it were, if it were to force itself into such an unnatural expression of its life energy. The bird yearns to fly because that is its divine nature and purpose. You too have a divine nature and purpose, and your heart holds the clue. What feels most like you? And that is so excellent. That message is so on point because I was reading an article about the Taurus full moon, and Taurus is very much about authenticity. And in that article, it was talking about what is the most authentic to you. Um... One of the lessons of Earth, of Taurus even, is that, especially because, because Taurus can be a very gentle and loving creature, a very gentle and loving being, but you, you rub it the wrong way and there go the horns, man. That bull is going to charge at you. And that's, that is, um, especially within this, and this was all in this article I was reading, especially in the expression from the full Zodiac, Scorpio being the opposite sign, Scorpio being about death and transformation, Taurus is about sustaining life uh, and maintaining and thriving and surviving. So the, 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 the dichotomy here is, yes, Taurus can be very loving and gentle, but it can also be fierce and scary like terrifying in the temper sense, sense. And so that's not good or bad. It's just, it is what it is. And that's what Taurus tends to represent, nature and the fact that it just is. And here, this is saying, what feels most like you? What is your authentic authenticity? Your opposing sides are not bad. They just are you. Honor them. Yes? Excellent. Card number 29, Pink Rose of Lady Nada. You are in the midst of a heart healing. 
a healing of the fears and anxieties that have held you back from enjoying your full magnificence. Lady Nada is here and uh, with all her gentle power, washing you in soft pink light. I did see that. I did see that light in the beginning. I saw that, the, that pink energy. All anger, fear, sadness, bitterness, disappointment, and hurt are soothed and loved into place. She brings you a sign of your future blossoming into deeper love. Yes. That, wow. That's beautiful. Okay, finally from the uh, Lightworker Oracle, we have card number two. Second Ray of Wisdom. Here we go. Second Ray of Wisdom. The second ray of wisdom is a consciousness of loving wisdom straight from the heart of the universe. It amplifies the magnetic power of attraction, empowering you to pull into your life all that is needed for your life's work. It brings the opportunity to heal, restore, and understand through the power of love and the light of ancient wisdom. The spiritual master known as the Buddha is with you now to help you fully receive and integrate the blessings of this ray of light from the universe. The second ray of wisdom is the energy of the open and loving heart of the universe. It is inclusive, drawing all things towards it with an invisible magnetism. It is gifted to you at this time to help you attract into your life the people, opportunities, and teachings that will help you succeed in your life mission. This ray will help you focus your consciousness in your heart. It will bring to consciousness any unresolved matters of the heart for healing. Hello, we've been going through some serious purging, haven't we lately? <laughs> This includes not only issues of relationship, but also any issues surrounding trusting your heart to lead you. This ray will help you heal your heart in an affirming and nurturing way. The challenge with this ray, given that it's so magnetic and attractive, is learning to discern to, and say no when you need to. Imagine a fisherman who casts a very wide net and catches most of the ocean in it. Not everything is useful or even desired by the fisherman. While some things are gratefully accepted by the fishermen, other things are, are best returned to the ocean where they belong. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful reading. Okay, so I'm just going to close out the reading because <laughs> we are an hour in, but um, closing out the reading here with some oracle guidance from the Whispers of Love. All right, guys. Closing re uh, closing messages from the Whispers of Love for this full moon in Taurus. Closing messages, please. Hear it. Whoa! <laughs> oh, my God. They're saying to take all of them. Okay. Card number 38, which boils down to an 11. Honesty is essential. To be a loving person, it is important that we speak truthfully in a loving matter. Manner, sorry, in a loving manner. Okay. Um, this is a lot, guys. And I'm saying, are you should please take them. Okay, you got it. Card number 15, practice compassion. See things from a different perspective. Absolutely. Instead of seeing things from a victim consciousness, look at things as a way to learn and to heal. At the contrast, as the contrast that's showing you what it is you don't want in your life. Okay, my gosh, these are so many messages. Um, card number 13, miracles and blessings, everything has its gift. That falls right in line with seeing things from a different perspective. Instead of seeing things as a, as a victim, be the magician and manifest through it. See the blessing in this situation. The blessing being what you have you learned in that situation. Romance, lavish the one that you love with your personal attention and affection. Please do not be afraid to tell someone or show someone that you love them, you care for them, you appreciate them. Never be afraid of that. If someone rejects you or looks at you screw face because of it, that has more to do with them than you. Keep that in mind. Uh, receive with love and appreciation. Receiving something lovingly from others is a way of showing love. Absolutely. You don't have to always give. Sometimes you can sit back and let, uh, allow others to give to you. And that is here in the message. Um of the queen of wands allow be allow yourself to be receptive rest and relaxation is essential we all have a fundamental need to take breaks again some of you are going to need to take a break 
Go into hermit mode for a little bit. Rest, recuperate, rejuvenate, regenerate your energies. Allow any of the downloads that you may have received. Allow the purging to take hold. Um, allow the downloads to be integrated. That kind of thing, okay? We have do something for someone else. Again, don't be afraid to show someone you love them. Okay? Next, we have have faith. Trust your faith in this situation. Okay? Especially that goes with the Miracles card because Miracles came out from the unicorns. And now we've got um, Miracles and Blessings here from the, from the Whispers of Love. I mean, allow yourself to believe in Miracles. The more you believe in them, the more they will show up. If you find yourself that if you find that you've never really experienced a miracle, well, that doesn't mean miracles don't exist. That means you just don't have a belief in them. You block them in your disbelief, okay? Next, we have believe, oh, I'm sorry, be in the present and dream of the future. And that absolutely goes with the last card here. Love who you are. You are a divine and wonderful person deserving of all the wonderful things that this life has to offer. So especially with all this purging that's happening, all this clearing, this walking away from situations that no longer serve us, be in the present and love who you are in the present and allow that to generate dreams of the future and allow yourself to manifest that by aligning with those dreams in the present, okay? All right. Well, there it is, guys. That was an excellent, awesome, awesome reading. If you're still here with me, thank you so much for sticking with it. Um, and, if, and, and, and to those to those that are no longer here that can't really hear what I'm saying, many blessings to you. Thank you for tuning in anyway. But this was an excellent reading, guys. I, I'm really excited to see the fruits of our labor coming out of this full moon in Taurus. Um, if you would like a private reading with me, I am available. The link is in the, or my email is in the description box below. Other than that, I look forward to connecting with you guys again. Please check out Morning Coffee if you're interested. And if you're looking to tune in for that, I will see you for Morning Coffee. Yeah. Much love to you all. Take care. And I will speak with you soon. Mwah! Bye.